Hi, my name is Rachel. I've had diabetes for 27 years now. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just and that's given me a lot of time to try different things and methods and technology to help manage it. I've come to find that my current diabetes management is definitely a bit more unconventional than you may be used to. Today I wanted to share my diabetes game changers. These are things that I use to stay in range as much as possible for me and to keep most of my sanity intact. Game changer we're gonna talk about is DIY. This one is pretty wild, but it's been completely life-changing. It's my non-FDA approved automated insulin delivery system. In this video, I'm discussing my personal experience with a non-FDA approved insulin pump. However, I want to make it clear that I'm not recommending this device as a professional healthcare provider. Diabetes management is incredibly personal and what works for me might not be suitable for everyone. It is crucial to consult with your healthcare team before considering any changes to your diabetes management plan, including the use of medical devices. They can provide personalized advice based on your unique health needs and circumstances. This is actually my insulin pump that I used to use in like middle school. And I'm pretty old now, so it's old. It's vintage. A DIY loop pump, also known in the community as DIY closed loop system or open artificial pancreas system. It's an insulin delivery system that uses a single board computer to connect an insulin pump to your CGM. This is a Riley link. It's actually in a case right now, but this is said single board computer and it talks to super old pump and communicates with my Dexcom here. The system then uses algorithms to automatically adjust insulin delivery based on blood sugar levels. This isn't that crazy, especially now that automated insulin delivery algorithms are the norm in regards to all of the mainstream pumps. But back in the day, again, I'm, we've established I'm fairly old. DIY looping was sort of a way to make the automated algorithms more accessible to people. The Medtronic pump was the first to come out with a hybrid closed loop pump and it just wasn't very accessible to like everybody and everybody in diabetes world deserves access immediate access if you've ever seen the hashtag we're not waiting that is the og hashtag from diy loop back in 2016 a bunch of amazing people with some seriously amazing computer science skills got together and they made the original diy loop algorithm and since then there have been branches of it, open apps, all kinds of good stuff, and they have been releasing their work publicly. Again, it works fairly similarly to pumps that are currently on the market like Control IQ or Omnipod 5. However, there are some really cool features. The meal announcing is my favorite part about DIY Loop and it's the reason I always end up going back to it. Anytime I've tried a mainstream pump, I usually go back to DIY Loop because I miss the meal announcing interface. Not only do you input the numerical grams of carbohydrates that you're eating for that meal, but you also need to let the pump know what type of carbohydrate you're eating. If if it's something like candy or something that will absorb in about two hours, you would hit the little candy button. Taco is sort of like the usual, like three to four hours of absorption. And then of course the pizza button is for something that is going to digest a lot more slowly and the carbs are going to absorb more slowly. And this signals to the pump that we need to manipulate the insulin a bit differently. This is so much better than the current pumps algorithms because you're not always just eating something that's going to absorb in the exact same amount of time every single time. I guess you could, but you'd be really bored. That feature is phenomenal. It's actually being released with a new pump. I can't remember what it's called because we come out with pumps like every 10 seconds now. Hey, honestly, I've sat here for a hot minute and I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, they are, there, there has been a pump that's been approved by the FDA and will use pretty much the same kind of interface that the DIY loop is. So it will require you to input carb absorption.
The other thing about meal announcing that I think is so important, and again, I miss it so much every time I'm not using it, is the ability to tell the pump when I'm eating the carbohydrates. I can let the pump know that I am pre-bolusing by 15 minutes. I can also let the pump know that I'm thinking of probably eating in about an hour, especially if my blood sugar is above target. I want it to start giving me the insulin that I need up front because I'm gonna have a longer pre-bolus. I can also edit the time. If maybe I ate a lot sooner than I thought or later than I thought, I can adjust that as well. And the pump will um, either give me more insulin or take back basal rate in an attempt to make sure that my blood sugar stays as steady as possible. I can also edit the carbohydrate count. If I ate more carbs or less carbs than I thought I would, it's going to know that I ate that previously, like two hours ago or an hour ago, as opposed to what you would do now, where you would say, I ate 30 grams of carbs right now. You actually ended up eating like 45 or 60 grams of carbs because you were still hungry. And then you decided to input that maybe an hour after you had ended up eating. The mainstream pumps are going to think that you're eating that six, that extra, you know, 30 grams in that moment, as opposed to an hour ago. Whereas DIY loop, you can actually let it know that, that it was at the original time that you inputted your first bolus. There's also a ton of other options for customizations like overrides. So for activity levels or times when you need more insulin, like prior to your period or times of stress, illness, you can also adjust the percentage of micro bolus that you want to receive. So on mainstream pumps, it's usually set at like 60% or something along those lines. Whereas this one, you can increase it or decrease it depending on how comfortable you are and and the type of person that you are. And the best part is it's always updating. And the whole point of the we're not waiting movement was the fact that it takes so long to get stuff through the FDA. We have to make sure that it works for literally everybody and their mom. And a lot of the time that just results in very slow progress with technologies. With DIY loop, you're getting a bunch of goodies updated on the rig, which is amazing. Obviously there are some downsides to this. You need to be pretty tech savvy not just in the sense that you have to build this with code. There are some amazing tutorials online and people to help you do that in the DIY loop Facebook group, but it's much more complex than your mainstream pumps. And your doctor is probably not going to have a ton of information for you about DIY loop because it's just not something they're familiar with. And it's also not FDA approved. So a lot of doctors aren't super jazzed about working with people that are using a pump that we haven't really study. You, you just have to be careful about that. All in all though, it has really changed my life, changed my time and range, and really decreased the burden of diabetes and choices that I have to make. 10 out of 10 to DIY loop recommend to all my friends and family. Yay, our next one is something that I've talked about before, a phrase. So a phrase is an inhalable it is in powder form. It comes in four, eight, and 12 cartridges that look like this. And they go into the inhaler that you change out every two weeks, but you can never remember to do that. So who knows? And then it looks a little bit, you can see it's like flying all over the place. It looks a little bit like cocaine. You just breathe it in. It is not at all discreet as is advertised, obviously. It's very yeah. so If that's kind of your vibe, that doesn't help. But the reason I love it is because it's super fast compared to rapid acting insulin. When I say super fast, I mean the onset is much quicker than rapid acting insulin. Definitely all these numbers vary, but typically rapid acting insulin will start lowering the blood sugar within 15 minutes. A phrase is more like 10 to 12 minutes. Honestly, some people might even see it even faster than that. It just sort of depends on your body. The reason it goes so quickly is because we are inhaling it directly into 
to the capillaries of the lungs and that is just a lot quicker absorption than when you are injecting into subcutaneous or your fatty tissue. The other fabulous thing about Afraza is the fact that it has a much shorter duration time than rapid acting insulin. So again, this varies per person, but in a lot of people, rapid acting insulin will stay in the body for three to five hours, which is what results in insulin stacking. You know, you're really not supposed to keep correcting on top of that. You wanna to try to wait until there is no insulin inside your body before you go for another correction, which can be really frustrating. I understand. Afraza, however, the duration of Afraza is somewhere closer to one and a half to three hours. So that means we can responsibly rage bolus, which is very exciting. Personally, I use a Fraza not for my meals necessarily, unless I'm maybe having something like very, very fast acting, very high sugar, you know. <laughs> something fun. I use it for like really stubborn above target blood sugars or if my insulin pump has failed or my infusion set has failed and I need insulin really fast. I'm very, very privileged and fortunate to have had a Fraza on my pharmacy benefit formulary so far. There is a direct pay program so you get a box which depending on how you use it could be about a month's worth of insulin for $99. Not great. It is very expensive out of pocket compared to even rapid acting vials. So it's most definitely a privileged and luxury item. If you do have access to it though, it's it's a pretty amazing and game changing tool, I will say. I wouldn't say that it like has changed my life in regards to lowering my A1C or raising my time and range, but it, it helps a lot with that mental burden or the gross feeling of like, oh my God, I'm in DKA because my insulin pump has failed and it just gives you much faster relief. If you're interested, I did make a whole video about Afraza that you can go watch and have all your fantastical questions answered. Okay, my last diabetes game changer is probably like kind of underwhelming for many people, but if you know me, if you have ever worked with me, <laughs> you know that steel cannulas are the love of my life. When I was, I took a pump break, like after wearing a pump for like 12 some odd years and finally I just took a break from it and I went back on the pump. I was on a different pump. I tried using a, maybe a different infusion set and I realized I just had like very, it was the first time I had really worn a pump with a continuous glucose monitor and I was just noticing I had like extreme anxiety with like, is my cannula bent? Is it working? I was, I usually am not one to have a ton of anxiety surrounding diabetes, but for some reason I was wild. I was pulling out sites all the time. I was changing things once a day. Like it was, it was not good. So then I read more about the steel cannulas and I was like, oh yeah. So steel cannulas obviously are fantastical because the cannulas are not plastic. They are steel. So they, really do not bend. Like it would be really hard to bend. So if you are somebody that maybe has some tougher skin, like those of us that have had diabetes for a long time and they didn't expect us to live so long, steel cannulas are amazing. I also find that they are great because some people have a sensitivity or sort of kind of an allergic reaction to the plastic cannula material. You probably will notice this if when you pull out your plastic cannula infusion set, you see some drainage, like not so great drainage. It's much redder and, and a bigger bump than one would expect. You can solve this problem by switching to steel cannulas or changing it every two days. If you are having absorption issues, you just, it's like very erratic. You're blood sugars don't have a lot of patterns. You may want to consider the fact that you might be having some pump absorption issues and a steel cannula is your best friend because it goes in, there are no questions about it being in there. This isn't to say that it is infallible. It is possible to 
accidentally put it in muscle, to put it in a place that's just not, like maybe it's, there's just more scar tissue, so it's not gonna absorb as well. But you do know that it's not bending. You do know that you're not having excessive inflammation or an allergic reaction. So I love steel cannulas. They're just my favorite. The only downside really is A, you have to change them every two days. But honestly, if you're having absorption issues to begin with, you're probably changing every two days anyway. So this wasn't a huge issue for me. B, some people might find them a little uncomfy. I don't notice that they're inside my body, but certainly putting them in, you have to do it manually. There's not really an injector or anything like that. It's not ideal. It's very old fashioned. Honestly, the peace of mind and the better absorption is worth all of that to me. So I would really encourage you to try out a steel cannula. You can usually ask a pump rep or you know if you're wearing a tandem or Medtronic, any of the tubed pumps have steel cannula options. Omnipump sucks so they don't. You can ask for like a sample infusion set from them just to try it out and see how you feel about it. So right now you might be thinking oh my gosh there are other types of infusion sets than the one I've been using for like 20 years. Yes friend there are. That's why your next step is to go watch my video all about infusion sets and learn more about them and you never know you could change your entire life. My name is Rachel. I'm a diabetes care and education specialist and I would love if you'd subscribe to this channel, give me a like, show me some love, and follow me on my social media. I will see you in the next video.